Okay, so today we're multitasking. We decided to roll a little bit while I introduce uh, Hooker again. Uh, yeah. Gonna show us stops. That skill is very important to learn in Derby. You gotta know how to stop, and there's different kinds of stops. So uh, before you demonstrate and show us your fancy stops, your fancy moves, <laughs> um, you had to stop from roller derby uh, for a little bit. Well, what happened yes. a year ago? Yes, a year ago, December 9th to the day, I broke my ankle, I broke my fibula, or it was more of a fibular fracture, um, and ended up getting a blood clot in my leg too, to boot. So I did have to stop roller derby and I wasn't sure I would come back. Um, but here I am. <laughs> did it, yeah, but did it stop Again, you from playing roller it derby? It did not, no. How long were you off skates for? About nine months. About nine months. Yeah. I mean, I think I got back out there about five months after, uh, but didn't really, really go out until nine months. Yeah, injuries happen yeah. a lot in roller derby, and yes. it's amazing how many, um, how strong you discover you are. Yes. Huh. All right, <laughs> you ready to show us some stops? I am. Okay. Okay, so she's going to demonstrate first the T-stop. Nice. Okay, keep rolling. And what are you going to do next? The plow stop? Sweet. What's next? And next we're going to do a um, toe stop. Toe stop. I'm like, why am I having a Okay. <laughs> yes. Toe stop. <laughs> well, you just stopped dead in your tracks. All right. And last we'll do the hockey stop. Let's get a little bit favorite. of speed. Sweet. Yeah. So for new skaters, rolling is a lot easier than stopping. And at some point, the skater has to learn how to stop. There's a lot of different kinds of stops. But, you know, you have to learn first to be able to stop on your own at any given point. And then also when you're with other skaters. Because if you're with other skaters and they're falling around you and you don't know how to stop and you're just plowing right over them, you are ineffective and you end up just hurting your teammates and you hurt yourself. So our next fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5, um, Galatians 5 verse 22 is self-control. Ugh, is that opening up a can of worms or what? So self-control is so, such a big task and don't let it overwhelm you. But it's just, you gotta learn when and how to stop. And what do you need to stop in your life? So, you know, sometimes if you get going too fast, especially on skates, it's harder to stop. So you gotta start small. So when we work with new skaters and we just give them the basics of how to stop. And you practice on your own and then you build up more speed and you build up more speed to where, you know, eventually you're still doing fancy stops. and. I still have fancy stops that I, I work on and, and can't master and I want to. But um, same thing in, in your Christian walk. You cannot get self-control in every area of your life all the time. And so you have to start small. It could be spending money. It, it could be eating. Um, it could be just your mouthing off to people. Whatever self-control that that you want to start to work on or be mindful of where you don't have any self-control and start working on that and again I'm just gonna remind you that being filled with the Spirit and that that you have God in your life you will be amazed how he does give you the strength to do things that you didn't think you could do but you've got to be working on your own skill yourself so what does that self-control look like for you what areas do you need to uh, slow down and stop um, and in what areas um, can you wait uh, don't pick too many too many self-control issues at once um, you know a lot of times what happens is new Christians kind of get this momentum going and then another Christian falls or fails or does something in front of them that confuses them and it's it's why we're always just telling people don't judge me and don't be so judgmental Christians are people and humans and are going to fail and make mistakes and that happens <laughs> all the time. And so when a Christian falls in front of you, what is your self-control going to be in response to that? Is it going to be falling too? Is it going to be, you know, do you need to stop and slow down? Do they need your encouragement? Um, what does stopping and self-control look like for you when other Christians around you are falling or failing 
or not even living up to your standards. Um, you've got to put self-control into that as well. And here's why that is so important is other Christians are your teammates. You're on God's team. And, and so if a teammate falls in front of me, you know, I need to know how to stop, how to control my movements around them and work together. So self-control is going to give you that ability and that power to work with other Christians. And that, that again, to work out the power of your life is, is being able to not just get along, but, but to do life with other Christians. And if you don't have any self-control or, or at least not working on it and practicing, you're, you're just gonna end up hurting yourself. Um, you know, what do you pray? There's, there's a lot of issues that um, are really hard in life, whether it be um, drug addiction or um, things that really bring you down. And, or maybe there are more simple things like, um, you know, mouthing off to someone. There's self-control issues, whether it's harmful to your body or just a bad habit. Um, those can be really challenging because there's times I've seen that God has given the grace to people and literally removed and helped them in an area of self-control or an addiction that they have or a bad habit. And then I've seen close friends and family um, battle and fight an addiction or a bad habit. Um, so, you know, there's no promise that God is going to remove something. Um, it's just your part is to be practicing your self-control and working on stopping and controlling your momentum. Um, this is my word for this year, self-control. I don't know if you do that. Um, pick a word for the year. I like to do that every now and then. Um, because when I hit menopause, I mean, I, food was never an issue and playing derby and, and being so active and getting the shit beat out of me, like I wanted to eat whatever I wanted to eat. So my eating got so out of control and letting food determine how I feel and looking to food too much. So, so I, that's my word this year is to kind of work on my own self-control in that area because I've been using it as an extreme comfort. And um, so I'm trying to learn a better a balance then. That's the area in my life right now. So um, what is it for you? Um, I don't know. But pray and ask God what self-control um, thing that he would like to give you strength and power because that is how you're going to be stronger and, and uh, uh, be able to stand. See you tomorrow.